everyone welcome back we are going to discuss about inter company transactions in business central so before we proceed i'd like to tell you that this is my channel if you haven't subscribed it please go and subscribe now and here you can find a lot of useful playlist for you to learn this is for business central functional consultant uh, mastering the essentials and uh, uh, another playlist which is specifically for the business central technical consultant like a uh, developers bc tutorial and i'm discussing about mba20 so MBA 20, which is Business Central Developer Associate exam. So, if you read this uh, playlist, this will cover almost all, uh, almost uh, the topics covered in MB 800 as well. Okay, so I'll be adding the videos here every week. So please watch here. And if you have any queries related to your certifications, like um, your uh, interview preparation tips and tricks, resume review, or investor one mentorship mock interview, you can schedule a call with me. The link is in the description. And these are the playlist, or like sorry, these are the ebook store which you can find it. The, this link is also there in the in description so if you want to buy any of these books like interview questions um uh, functional consultant checklist so you can buy it from here so let us straight away go to the topic intercompany transactions and those who are new to this intercompany first let us understand what is intercompany transactions okay so imagine you have um imagine you have two shops okay um uh, let me just show you so this this is like intercompany transaction is like exchanging between sibling shops owned by the same person okay so imagine you have a shop a okay this is shop a and here you have a shop b okay so this one shop shop a will sell fruits okay and this shop sells vegetables okay so shop a if they need any vegetable they will buy from the another shop owned by the same person these two shops are owned by a person called abc okay so if they want fruit if, uh, if shop a need vegetable they will be getting it from the shop b vice versa if the shop b needs fruits they will be getting it from the shop a okay so this is one example we can have an another example as well so imagine you have uh, two coffee shops okay you have two coffee shops so that is your owning right so the shop a and uh, you have another shop called shop b okay so there's a cafe a or cafe b under the same company so cafe a specializes in roasting coffee beans so here you will get the coffee beans okay and um, cafe b excels in making pastries okay like a cakes or something so if cafe a supplies coffee beans to cafe b so if we are supplying this to cafe b shop b and in return cafe shop b is providing the pastries and cakes okay these exchanges are, are intercompany transactions so within a same company we are doing some transactions which we called as inter company transactions got it so if you are new to accounts or these topics then you can understand what is this so dynamics 365 business central help manage these transactions by tracking them as if they were happening between two separate companies ensuring that the accounting records reflect all internal trades accurately and efficiently this is where intercompany transactions helps us to um, help specifically in business central okay so an uh, intercompany partnership make it easier to handle accounting processes when two or more subsidiaries of a company frequently do business with each other partners can exchange transactions such as sales and purchases and handle them either manually or automatically for example, when a partner sends a sales journal line to another partner, a purchase journal line is created for the receiving partner. Okay, so in intercompany chart of accounts can be, for example, a version of the synchronization partners chart of accounts. Each partner maps their accounts to the intercompany charts of accounts and each partner also maps their dimension and dimension values to the intercompany dimensions. 
before you start with the intercompany transactions you need these things to uh, uh, to be very careful and you have to make few decisions from this so what are those decisions so the first one is what the intercompany uh, the chart of accounts should be the basis for the intercompany chart of account so this is what the important thing when before you have you should start intercompany transactions and you take the decisions okay so this chart of accounts so all companies in the partnership must use the same intercompany chart of accounts you can base your intercompany chart of accounts on the chart of accounts from one of the companies in the partnership or create a new intercompany chart of accounts as well you map the account to use in the partnership in both the ways so that each partner both sends and receives transactions in the correct account so we will learn about all these key decisions one by one this is the introductory video we will understand what are the important and essential thing and then we will learn one by one in the upcoming videos okay so the next one is what which dimensions should be the basis for the intercompany dimension so this is an another important decision which you should take okay so which dimension if you take if you use an intercompany dimensions they must be the same for all companies in the partnership which dimensions you are taking which must be the same after you specify your intercompany dimension map their dimension values properly so even we will check this okay this is the second one then the third one is which partner or customers or vendor or both so learn like who, which partner is a customer you have to be very careful about this and uh, which partner is a vendor and you have to set up the proper intercompany here you should be very careful about this thing which is the partner or the intercompany so once if you go to your business central portal and check for the intercompany setup okay just type intercompany so it will show you the intercompany setup here okay where you can easily understand like which partner everything okay here you will have the dimensions you have the accounts and everything add ic partner intercompany partner so you can see all these things so we have to set up that and the next decision we should uh, which you should uh, do is what uh, the how do you want to handle item numbers okay so how you are planning to handle the item number so this is very important as well okay how you are planning to handle the item number so if intercompany lines contains items you can either use your own item number or you are or you can also set up your partner's item number for each item either in the vendor item number field or in the common item number field on the item card so you can also use the item reference action to map your item numbers to your intercompany partners description of the items so each and everything this every uh, decision which i am talking to you involves a certain setup that's like certain demo which we have to try that we will definitely discuss in the upcoming videos then the next one is do you want to specify bank accounts to use in the partnership so you can speed up the process of registering payment transactions by specifying the bank account to use for the partner company that is also possible and then are resources involved if intercompany sales transactions will include resources fill in the ic partner pitch general ledger account number on a field on the resource card for each resource the field contains the number of the intercompany the general ledger account that the amount of this resource will post to the intercompany partner so we have to set up the resource as well okay so that is also possible that is also important that is setting up the resources is also important which everything is available in your business central uh, available in your uh, business central um, itself like you can just go ahead here and you can search for the resources okay okay so resources so here you can set up okay so here you can find like how to um, correctly manage the resources and activities which is possible here in the resources and finally and finally to talk how do you want to identify the companies in the partnership 
So all parties must agree on a unique intercompany partner identification code for each company. You will assign the code to the customer and the vendor cards to identify related transactions. So you can create a number series there. Okay. We will also see like how to create a number series. Okay. And uh, how to make it like a default number. Anything like whatever I have discussed here, you know, you can just go ahead and search in your um, in your business uh, center. So here you can see number series. You can choose, you can create a new number series and create it. Okay. We will discuss all these things. These are the important key decisions to make before you start. Okay. So seven important decisions we have to make it. And the overview of the steps to get started before you start working with the intercompany, you should be very careful. The very first thing is what you have to configure the company specific settings for managing intercompany transaction. Okay, this is the first one. You should configure uh, the intercompany settings. The next important thing is identify and set up synchronization partner company for coordinated transactions. And the third one is the intercompany chart. So create a unified intercompany chart of accounts for all the partners to use to exchange the transactions. Fourth one is you have to map your company's account to this unified chart for accurate recording of inbound and outbound transactions. And then uh, you have to define and align uh, intercompany dimensions and their values across companies for consistent uh, reporting and designate uh, which companies are your intercompany partners in these transactions. You have to tell which uh, intercompany partners, who are all the intercompany partners and finally specify which partner companies act as a vendor, customers or both streamlined exchanges. So all these things we have to um, uh, we need before we get started so in the next video probably in the part two video we will just discuss like how which chart of accounts should be basis for the intercompany chart of accounts we will understand this in detail and probably we will just move on further with all these examples thank you take care and bye bye i'll see you soon with the next exciting video